We're ready for questions now. Please wait for the mic. We're going to have to get all this. Uh, where are we? Are you ready? Let's, let's start here and work across. Mark Bloom, then we'll go this way and we'll turn over to the aisle. Uh, for Jim and David or anyone who wants to ask, how much electrical life power at a time, lifetime, do we have in the LEM and how much oxygen lifetime, how long do we have? Well, Mark, it depends upon how we use it, obviously. We have four batteries in the descent stage of the LEM with 400 amp hours each. We have uh, two batteries in the ascent stage with 296 amp hours each. If you rough that out quickly, it says we can use power at about 25 amps. Uh, Steady, steady current until we get back. Now, we'll have to um, arrange the electrical profile so that we can bring up the systems to perform the dock DPS maneuver, and then we'll power down to minimum levels and go along like that. When I left, we had an ample power supply to do the whole mission, but we were still roughing it out and trying to get in a configuration which we knew. Oxygen, we have 48 pounds of oxygen in the, in the uh, LEM descent tanks, which is more than adequate to do the mission. We also have a couple pounds in the, in the LEM ascent tanks. I, I think I said decent. Decent tank has 48 pounds. The SN tanks have about a pound or so. The point is that we have locked up the CSM systems to preserve that spacecraft for reentry, both in terms of power and, and oxygen. So uh, it, it is sufficient to support entry. Uh, the analyze is completely intact. There's no problem with it at all. I wonder if we can expand a little more on the possibility of an Atlantic uh, Ocean landing and what the recovery posture is for the Atlantic. Uh, for an Atlantic landing, we would have airplanes with para-jumpers on the scene at the time of landing. We're presently uh, surveying that area of the Atlantic. It's, as I remember, it's about uh, 20 or 25 degrees south and about, uh, well, I think it's about 25 or 30 degrees west longitude. And we're presently uh, surveying the area for ships of opportunity. But we we do not have a planned recovery ship in that area, as you know. Well, would you, let, me, let me follow up on that. Would you say that now it seems a great deal more likely that you'd go for 142 hours and the Pacific, where you have a recovery capability? Uh, I think that's a good possibility, but I'd like to reserve judgment until I see what happens in the next hours. We have some uh, 18 or 19 hours until that uh, burn has to be made, so I think we'd certainly be watching the situation. The Pacific is a lot better from from, uh, from the standpoint that we have the ship there. It's better from a, a network standpoint. So it's a preferred place, even though it might take a little longer. Uh, Chris or Jim, can you tell us where the uh, three astronauts are and how they will be living in their return to Earth? Well, when I left, <clears throat> I think that Jack Swigert was still in the command module and uh, Jim and Fred were in the limb. And I think that they'll be living between the two spacecraft until uh, uh, they return. Uh, sometime uh, before reentry, of course, the three of them will return to the command module and put the hatch back in and jettison the LEM, jettison the service module. If I were going to, I were going to guess, I'd guess that uh, two of them would sleep in the CSM while the other one stayed awake in the LEM. I, I would guess that they'll probably go to some kind of ship like that. Yeah. And I followed up. How are they going to be getting oxygen and heat and in, 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 in the uh, command module? From the lab? Uh, th we're going to be running one environmental control system or the other. Initially, we'll be running the LEM system. That's what we're running right now. Now, uh, intermittently, we'll run the CSM system to make sure that we keep the uh, atmosphere in the LEM uh, free of carbon dioxide. So we'll be alternating. That's why I say there'll be people in both spacecraft. Let's take some over here and then we'll come back. On this far side. Right there, yeah. <coughs> Yeah, well, somebody explain to me what you mean by a ship of opportunity in the Atlantic. Is that some merchant ship, a Russian sub that happens? It could be a merchant ship. It could be, uh, uh, I suppose it could be a foreign nation's naval vessel. Any of that kind of thing. <laughs> yes, sir. Right here. Uh, Chris, has this abort situation or altered uh, trajectory ever been run on simulators? In just this way. Oh yes, uh, many times we run all kinds of abort situations, and and uh, if you recall, in uh, in Colonel McDivitt's flight, we actually burned the uh, dips engine attached to the command and service module. The the uh, autopilot in the lunar module is designed to carry a 
the maneuver under those circumstances. That is, the digital autopilot to damp the, the oscillations of the combined spacecraft. Uh, we are looking even at uh, the possibilities of dropping the service module, but that particular type of, of maneuver has not been tested in flight, and we'd have to make ourselves certain that uh, we could control the spacecraft under that kind of CG and inertia condition. So yeah, that's kind of unlikely that we would do that. We, if we did that, it would give us that much more delta V, you see, because we'd get rid of quite a bit of weight from the uh, CSM. Jack Strickland? Uh, uh, Chris or Jim, uh, if you've got a situation where the limb oxygen system can provide like uh, 50 plus hours for two guys, uh, how do you equate that with 146 hours of return if you don't have any kind of environmental control uh, uh, operation in the command module right now? Normally, we on the lunar surface, we plan on three uh, mm -hmm. lunar surface repressurizations. and actually has enough for four. Now, there's about 6.6 .6 pounds of oxygen per repressurization required, and the, and the limb leak rate is about uh, 0.08 pounds per hour. Uh, the metabolic rate is a little bit, and we're using probably two tenths of a pound per hour, so we've got uh, quite a large margin there. Pardon you recharge the uh, pluses also. Pardon? Let's, let's get this straight if we can. You use, you're saying you use two tenths of a pound per man per hour? A better, number, a better number is six to eight pounds for the three men per day. Six to eight pounds per Correct, and no. that plus what you, you have might to, have for... Uh, you, yeah, leakage. you have to take in that cabin leakage, too. All right. If, if, Jack, if I can follow up here just a second. Have you got enough, enough oxygen to get them back safely? Yes. All right, over here. According to the press handouts, the Navy's got a standby task force in the Atlantic to recover if necessary. You wouldn't go to this, you'd go to the Ship of Opportunity, Emergent Ship, if necessary? We don't have a U.S. Navy recovery ship in the Atlantic. Is deemed necessary for this mission? It was not deemed necessary for this mission. Sig, so where were the... Where was the Atlantic recovery point again, uh, geographically, if you could, uh, uh, and the Pacific? This is, this is uh, rough, Paul, but it's something like 20 to 25 degrees south latitude, and I think it's about 30 degrees west longitude. Just below the point of South America there, Paul. The bulge in that area, due, due south of that. Uh, you mentioned uh, that, that you should be able to generate around 25 amps per hour, uh, and you have to divide that out against the loads. Will there be sufficient power for the transponders so that you can get a good track on the uh, spacecraft? Uh, I will be able to bring them up um, when we need to, and I believe that we'll have that kind of power. I really don't have that close a handle on the power. I, we came over here before we had all those details worked out to that well, level. As long as it, with the uh, Omnis and the uh, 220 foot dishes, I don't think we'll have any problem. Either. Also, I, I appreciate that you haven't been able to give any uh, thought to uh, what caused all this, but there, I was looking through the transcript and there, there were certain problems with the O2 uh, tanks and uh, the cryo temperatures and uh, problems of cy fan cycling and stratification. Because this, uh, apparently one of the tanks was oscillating very rapidly in temperature, and this was noted earlier today. Uh, does this give you uh, any uh, any thought of what might have happened? No, not yet. Uh, stratification is something that typically happens in these tanks, and it's nothing that we haven't seen before. Uh, right now, I have absolutely no clue to what happened. We had something... It was pretty rather, widespread, we know. Rather violent happened in Bay 4, we think. It, something happened to the fuel cells in the oxygen tank, and, and they were down in that area. It was a rather violent kind of thing because it apparently reset some of the check valves in the RCS quads, which are susceptible to shock. But as far as what exactly happened, I have no idea. Uh, Chris, are, are you confident that you have enough power under the con current configuration to, to bring the, the uh, follow back in? Yes, but I think we'll have to be very frugal in how we use it, and that's what you probably heard some of the discussions uh, uh, back and forth between the crew. We, we were trying to consider whether we would keep the platform up, for instance, between now and the time you go behind the moon in order to maintain that alignment so that they wouldn't have to do another alignment when they get ready to do the burn on the dips and so on. So it will have to be very carefully used between here and, uh, and splash.
And, and how do you feel in point of concern between now and Gemini 8? Well, I, I guess I would have to say I feel a great deal more concerned. We're, uh, we're still something like uh, 70 to 80 hours away from the Earth. And in Gemini 8, we were never more than an hour and a half to get to a recovery point and never more than 20 minutes to land. Carl, we'll take one back in and move up this way again. At the time that you left, what was the situation with regard to venting to the outside and motions of the spacecraft from that? Was there any? Not I don't know. I can't, I, I can't venting recall. Had, the venting had been decreasing, and if we were leaking probably from that bay, and if, it looked like the pressures were all dropping, so I would assume that the venting had gone down. It was a little difficult to tell from the, the conversation. I would assume that the venting had decreased considerably. Are you